Hi, I'm Dr. Beer, and in this tutorial we will consider a system of n-coupled quantum dots and how we can model them numerically in MATLAB. So here's the system of interest. There are n quantum dots, which we think of as charge traps. If we have a single electron, it can be located on any one of these n quantum dots. We will use a site basis where we define state ket1 here as the electron on dot1, and then ket2, the electron on dot2, and so on. We stipulate that the electron can hop between adjacent dots with a hopping energy. Gamma is 0 0.05 electron volts, or 50 milli electron volts. And we want to work in this site basis with these states that we already described. So a little theoretical background. The Hamiltonian will describe the energetics of this system. The Hamiltonian has units of energy, and its diagonal elements will be called occupation energies for the states phi sub j. So let's consider some basis, for example the site basis. The diagonal matrix elements for our Hamiltonian will be the occupation energies for some state j, and you can understand that physically as the potential energy for the system to be in state j. Now the off diagonal elements of the Hamiltonian describe the transition of a, the system from state k to j here. So it's a kinetic energy by contrast to the occupation energies which are potential energies, but this is an amount by which the system raises its potential energy in tunneling or transitioning from k to j. In this example we specified it as a positive number, but it needs to enter into the Hamiltonian as a negative number because in order to tunnel the system needs to lower its potential energy. Another concept we will look at is the time independent Schrodinger equation. This is an eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian where these phi sub n's satisfy the eigenvalue equation and so they're the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian and then the e sub n's are the eigenvalues or more specifically the eigenenergies of the Hamiltonian. The final concept that we'll look at here is the time dependent Schrodinger equation. It models the dynamics of the system. We can write it in a matrix form like this. Here i is the square root of negative 1 and then h is the reduced Planck constant. The final concept here is the time evolution from an initial state. With a constant Hamiltonian, we can write the time dependent state in this form. There's the time evolution operator acting on the initial state psi zero. And the time evolution operator is actually a matrix exponential of this form. So without further ado, let's see how we model the system. So here's a MATLAB window. I'm going to bring in a new script and I'm going to dock it. And what we first need to do is define some constants. We'll start with the reduced Planck constant. That's its value in electron volts times seconds. Now the units are very important, so I will put them in here like this. Let's define some parameters. So this capital N is the dimension of the system. It is unitless and it specifies the number of quantum dots in our system. And then I put in the tunneling energy or the gamma, which comes from our problem statement here. Okay, now we need to create the Hamiltonian. Going back to the problem statement, we're saying that the electron can hop between adjacent dots with this tunneling energy. We'll also specify here that no dot is favored. What that means for our model is that all the diagonal energies are going to be the same. The occupation energies for each dot will be uniform. And since these are potential energies, we are free to pick the zero. So we will just say that all the diagonal elements or the occupation energies in the Hamiltonian are going to be zero. Specifically, we are working here in the site basis. So let's make the Hamiltonian. And let's just do this in a couple of iterations. I'm going to do the diag operator. Let's save this. So if I run this, you see that I've created this H matrix for the Hamiltonian and it has ones on the diagonal. Now, earlier we said that the diagonal should be all zeros and we're going to put these ones actually as negative gamma and we're going to shift them in the off diagonal because that models the system that we desired where the electron can hop between adjacent dots only. So it allows the system to transition from dot one to dot two, but not dot one to dot three directly. Or the system can tunnel from dot two to dot one or dot two to dot three. And that's what we're going to do here. If I run this again, now you see, again, the energies are on the diagonal, which we don't want. So I'm going to shift it by putting in a plus one here. And now what you can see is, well, the diagonal is all zeros. And then we have this negative hopping energy in the super diagonal. And so this term actually right here, this element means that it enables the system to hop from dot two to dot one. This enables the electron to hop from dot three to dot two, dot four to dot three, and so on. So we have to add to this one more term, which we will place in the sub diagonal. Running it again, 
here's our Hamiltonian, just like what we wanted. This allows the electron to hop from dot one to dot two. This describes hopping from dot two to dot three and so on. So that's adequate for the Hamiltonian that we sought. So again, the diagonal is zero because no dot is favored over the other. And then the super diagonal and the sub diagonal describe hopping from one dot to the next. So one thing we would like to do is to calculate and then visualize the stationary states. I'll also just note here that we're working here in the site basis. Okay, and now for the eigenstates. To find the eigenstates, we really need to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. So we can do this in MATLAB using the eig command. Eig calculates the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. When we do this, we get the eigenvalues stored in the diagonal matrix D, and then the eigenvectors stored in another matrix V. We'll put here phi to represent the eigenvectors and then E for the energies, and we give both a subscript N just for consistency with the problem. And now we put eig H. To illustrate what we've just done, let's do some visualization. So I'm making a selection variable, and what we're going to do is to plot the eigenstates. Each column of this phi sub N is a different eigenvector, so let's just pick an eigenvector and then plot it. We'll actually plot the probability distribution. So we're picking all rows and then this selection column. They're basically selecting a column. And then we calculate the probability distribution. Actually, I'm going to move this to the calculation part because I think I like it there better. So let's use bar 3. No, just bar, actually. And we'll just run that. So here's our plot. Well, what are we looking at here? Well, the x-axis is the quantum dot. So let's put here. OK, so I've done some formatting. Eig returns the ordered eigenvalues of the system. So let's just put that in here. So that the first column of phi n picks out the lowest energy eigenstate, and the second is the second lowest eigenstate, and so on. So that means that when I selected the first column, I actually get the lowest energy eigenstate, because these eigen energies are in the matrix. Uh, well, let's just look at that. And you see here, they go from small to large. So the eigen energies are ordered and each eigenenergy corresponds to the particular column in the phi matrix, and so our eigenvectors are ordered. So what happens now, if we select the second eigenvector and plot that, we went from one peak to two peaks, and to visualize this even better, let's make this 75 sites. Okay, so here's our system. Let's go back to one, the ground state, or lowest energy eigenstate, change it to two, and we have two peaks and one node and this should remind you of the particle in the box, or the infinite square well, where the eigenstates are just like these. Okay, so now we solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation for this system. We got the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. Now let's consider time evolution. Let's start with a stationary state where we have the system in, say, the ground state, the lowest energy eigenstate. Let's also add some more parameters here. Okay, so I've put in 201 time steps. We need a time scale. So what I'm going to do is choose the difference between the first excited energy and the ground state, and I will consider that to be the, the time scale for this system. Okay, so we have an energy scale, and then I turned that into a time scale because H bar has units of electron volts per second, and then the energy here is electron volts. So the time scale is actually seconds. And now we can do some calculations here. Let's make a time vector using some of the parameters we made here. Let's make a storage vector. It will have one row for each site and then one column for each time point. And we'll use a for loop to calculate this, TIDX for time index. So I close that off with an end. We use our time index. That needs to be all rows, time index column, and it needs to be u of t times psi zero. And what is u of t? Well, let's just write it like this. One i is the imaginary number. There's our time, Hamiltonian, and then we divide by h bar. Now to get the probability distribution as a function of time, we simply do an element-wise multiplication of our time-dependent state with its complex conjugate. I'll save that and just run it to make sure that things work. Okay, so that was good. I found an error run it again, do things work, incorrect dimensions, what didn't it like? I'll try moving this h bar. Let's just see what, how big my u of t matrix is. 
Okay, that's good. It's an n by n. Okay, here's my error. Size 0 should be a column, not a row. So I had this backwards, so it should be all rows, first column, which is exactly what I did up here, and that's right. So, okay, let's try that again. Okay, now things run properly. So let's do some plotting here. Visualization. Let's change this to be probdist underscore t, so it's, it's uh, not redundant with the first one. This is a time-varying probability distribution, and let's make a new figure. I'm using bar 3 color. That's not a standard MATLAB function. You can download it, however. So we're running the calculation. And here's the, the fourth eigenstate that we've plotted the probability distribution for here. And then here is the probability distribution in site and time. So let's just put some labels in so that we can better see what's going on here. So we do that again. Okay. Let's actually make the font name a little bit bigger, better. Okay, that's better. Oh, let's also put in a Z label. Okay, so we're getting a multitude of plots, and that's okay. That's pretty nice. Um, one thing you'll notice here, though. Oh, let's see, I have it backwards. So let's change the X label should be time step, and the Y label is site. How do I know that? Well, there should only be 75 sites, and then time is on this axis. Now, notice here what's happened. We don't see any variation here because we started with an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. And you can show that these eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, well, any expectation value for these states is going to be constant. And the, the probability distribution for these states is constant. So let's see what happens with another eigenstate. We should see the same result. So instead of selecting the ground state, uh, well, actually, let's, let's first close all so we can see things. And I'm in, in fact, I'm going to build that in here. Let's put in a close all and a clear all. But let's select a different initial state. So I'm going to comment this one out, and I'm going to copy, paste, and let's make it size 0 be the second, or yeah, sure, let's do the third stationary state. Plot that, okay, and you can see here, again, the system is constant. Now let's do something slightly different. Instead of doing some, you know, a single eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Let's add a couple of them together. So let's add the second and the third together. And we need to multiply this all by 1 over square root 2. This will help us normalize the state. So it's an evenly weighted superposition of the second and third eigenstates. So if I run this, you start to see here that there are time dynamics. We start in some superposition of eigenstates 2 and 3 and you can see the system is evolving in time. Now maybe another way to visualize this instead of the bar 3 is surf C. Let's try that. Okay, and ways to make this better, let's do shading and terp. Okay, now you can see it better. And surf C gets you the surface and then the contour plot at the bottom. Maybe we only care about the surf, so let's get rid of the C here. And that's okay. But one thing that surf C allows us to do that bar 3 doesn't allow us to do is we can put in axes uh, spacing for the x and y axes. So to do that, since prob disk T is a matrix, we need to put in a matrix for the x and y axes. So x label is for the time step. So let's put in here. I always forget how this works, so I'm just going to experiment here. So this is a column vector times a row vector. Gets us a matrix where each row has a different value of time. And I think that corresponds with the fact that x label is a time step. And then here we have a column vector of ones times a row vector where each column corresponds to a different site. And instead of plotting just time, I'm going to also divide by our time scale. And let's just see if that runs. So the data mentions have to agree, so it didn't like that. Let me try swapping things. I think this will be better because uh, this is an n by nt matrix, and now this is this is going to make an n by nt matrix, and then we have to make another n by nt matrix here. Okay, so we have the right number of sites. Now the time step we need to adjust. Uh, it, it's actually the x label isn't time step, but it's actually t divided by our time scale. Okay, so here's our plot. 
Oh, one thing, I'll make this a little bit nicer. Interpreter, LaTeX. All right, here's our nicer plot. So here's our time, which is divided by our time scale. And then we have our site, which really is the quantum dot number. So the electron started with high probability for some low number site. And then as time went on, the probability for finding the electron on these different sites evolves. We also saw that if we choose the initial state to be an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, then you have constant evolution in this probability density because we are looking at the evolution of a stationary state. Okay, so we have looked at creating a Hamiltonian for this system of n coupled quantum dots. And then we looked at solving the time independent Schrodinger equation to get the eigenstates. And then we looked at time dependence by applying this solution to the time dependent Schrodinger equation. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm also going to put this code up on GitHub and I'll give you a link. Feel free to like the video, subscribe, share the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.